In this video, I'm going to ride from Lanto Island, where I live in the rural villages, to Kowloon in order to do a little bit of uh, bike shopping, get some service parts, and also to put some new tyres on my Moto Guzzi motorcycle. It's quite an interesting ride as I go from the countryside and mountains and beaches of Lantau right into the urban jungle of Kowloon. Lantau is actually connected to the rest of Hong Kong mostly by ferries which most people like myself take and only takes half an, an hour to get to Hong Kong Island. But on this occasion since I have to get the tyres fitted I'm going to go uh, via uh, the new airport at Cheplak Kok um, across or along the highways and across the bridges and through the tunnels to Kowloon. It's quite an impressive ride especially up on the on the bridges which when I first came to Hong Kong weren't here and you get a, a magnificent view of uh, the ocean and uh, all the container ships and marine vessels um, and then at the end of the bridge you can either turn north uh, across some other bridges and go towards Shenzhen, um, on which is in China. Or, uh, as I'm going to, I'm going to go through some tunnels and then pick up another bridge and then carry on um, past the container port uh, and into the heart of Kowloon itself. Um, I'm going to pass through areas where I used to work as a, a policeman back in the 80s and 90s. Um, and Kowloon sort of divided into the west part, where I mostly worked, and the east. Um, and so on this route, I will probably go through Yama Day, uh, uh, Jim Sa Joy, Mong Kok, and into um, Kowloon City, which was the, the first place I was posted to when I was a young inspector. And I'm probably going to have a little bit of a walk around while I'm waiting for the tyres to be fitted. Piaggio Aprilia Motoguzzi Vespa. Go in here. See if they got what I need. Ooh. See, this is what happens. You go into a motorbike shop and it's full of lovely motorbikes. <laughs> That's surprising. Ooh, 169. But I have that instead of my V85. Um, there's something about the shape. It's a lovely bike, I'm sure. A lot of heat protection on the, um, the exhausts. And this is, I don't know, is it as pretty as mine? Maybe not. I like that Moto Guzzi green in front. It's a nice bike. The Prelia 660. My favourite bike at the moment. I keep going on about this. It's like the old model. That would be, I think, my round the world. Although I do have my eye on the um, CF Moto um, MT450. What tires does that have on? Big old exhaust now, fucking EU nonsense. Bloody Europeans, what have they ever done for us? A nice bike 660 again that's a very popular bike for here RSV4 mm. V100 again actually the white is quite nice actually Mandela Some V7 V9 oh that's interesting V9 Bobber seen that. Although it's just a stylistic thing, isn't it? V7 is a good old bike. That one's a good old bike as well. Um, I still think I like my V85. I don't have them in here anymore. Um, although I would be... The thing with the V80, my, what I do here in Hong Kong, is I, I'm not going off-road. <laughs> I'm not going too far. And I want to be comfortable. You have arrived. And I want to get, um, I have arrived. 
and uh, I want Fanny to sit on the back and be comfortable because she doesn't ride her own bike here anymore. We'll give her a Moto Guzzi helmet. <coughs> a thousand bucks. Yellow tank. Maybe not. Get sucked in, don't you, for spending this stuff. Right, let's see if, how things go getting an oil filter. You can get anything done in Hong Kong. Anything. We're on the back door of uh, the doorstep of China, which is a lot of fun nowadays. It's um, safe. I put that down to the Hong Kong police and the laws, the British laws. Turn right onto Kowloon City Road. We got none of the UK nonsense. The UK has really lost the plot. I, I don't recommend anyone staying there. If you've got the means to get out of the UK, you should. The only good country in Europe, I think, is... Look at that, it's busy and hot, is uh, Italy. That'd be the only country I'd live in. I mean, there are other places I haven't been to. There might be parts of Spain that would be quite nice, I imagine. Very strange, wandering around where I used to patrol as a policeman. Some bits are very familiar and some bits I have no clue where I am. These bits I know and then down towards there would be the old walled city. Maybe I should walk through the old walled city on this uh, little video tour. Yeah, I used to wander around in my safari suit. Sun brown, my cap my shiny shoes and my 0.38 Smith & Wesson in an old cavalry style holster cross draw wandering about checking my boys most of the time it was an adventure for me it's like exploring like I do now I just love wandering around being a policeman in those days at least allowed you to do that so Hong Kong safe low tax easy to be, run a business if you want to start up a business Hong Kong's the place to go head northeast There's toward Martau Cock Road handouts and thresholds and uh, allowances and uh, the efficiency of it all is fantastic I'm pretty sure see I wouldn't have been able to do that as a policeman because I'd be setting a bad example I haven't had lunch yet like this when I used to be here. Head okay. northwest on San Shan Road Pretty toward nice. Pak Tai Street. Coffee, coffee shops everywhere. I mean some of the, I actually used to also patrol this area, um, well twice really, when I was in police tactical unit. My platoon were often um, sent to Kowloon City. And then later, when I was a commander in emergency unit, Kowloon West, based in Mong Kok, we get out here. In fact, we got involved in the clearance of the, the walled city, which is where I'm walking towards now. It's almost, I mean, all these youngsters, they have no idea about the Royal Hong Kong Police. And anyone who does is an old fart like me. We're the last of the colonials. On my attachment from police training school, I arrested a, a robber. <laughs> so I just happened to be in the right place, right time, and understood the words on the radio, which most of the time I never did. Well, not in the early days, anyway. And it said, Dargip, which means robbery. And then uh, I looked up at the street sign, like that one there, where I was, and I was actually in the same street. And then it's just a matter of working down the numbers. And I, I looked inside the... Uh, it was a restaurant actually and there were two guys rolling around on the floor in a struggle so i dived jumped in king chap mo york and uh i couldn't tell which was the robber and which was the uh which was the victim so uh, i just i just uh restrained both of them until one of my boys turned up
Oh, hairy crab season. Not something that I particularly like, but I remember my Chinese team, they love it and Fanny likes it as well. This is what I remember about Kowloon City. So I think I'm going to walk up to where the old wall city used to be. Uh, I'll try and insert a picture of it. Of course, I don't have any pictures from my time. <laughs> no one had, I certainly didn't go on patrol with a camera as a police officer around here. It was all very different then. And uh, largely because um, two, two things in this district. One was the airport, Kai Tak Airport, it's just on my right. And the walled city is just in front of me, I think, or where it used to be. Oh. I think it was here. All this sort of stuff, all of this is new. Well, here we are at Kowloon Walled City Park. Unbelievable. I often think if you time traveled and went to different places, you go in here, look at it. It's, they made it out to look like some Qing Dynasty. So holy then. It's even the ca cannons. I used to see these cannons. Um, in the middle of it. So here, I'll show a picture of what it used to look like. And then it was knocked down and in fact when I was in emergency unit Kowloon West, somewhere around 90, what it'd be 92 or 93, we had to kick everyone out. Of course people didn't want to leave. Um, but eventually we did it. And uh, Eventually we did it and they were all rehoused probably in much better places I, I imagine. Uh, there might be a little uh, old model what it looked like. Well it certainly didn't look like that when I was patrolling it. But it did look like that. Yes. Chased a few people around here back in the day. So, the history is quite interesting. I think it was in the Treaty of Nan, Nan, Nanking in uh, Hong Kong and eventually the Kowloon and then the new territories were leased over to the British. This sort of fell outside the treaty and technically, although geographically really, technically was considered outside the treaty and therefore still part of China. Well, the gardens are very pretty, I have to say. They've done a good job. Very nice. Usual uh, Hong Kong background of piling and jackhammers. But uh, you've got to say it's an improvement. The way people lived. I write about it in the chapter I think the second chapter of Royal Hong Kong Police in my bigbiketrip.net website. That's pretty nice. Yeah, I'm very happy that I'm still living in Hong Kong. It's a great base to be, especially so since my other half, Fanny, is Chinese. So it's a sort of compromise between China and the West. I've been very successful here. I had a fantastic time in the Royal Hong Kong Police. It taught me a lot of things. But it set me up in, in um, you know, with skills, leadership, command, and courage, uh, planning. Well, here we go. Something old. With... <laughs> Since when was um, 
steel reinforced concrete a national monument but I guess at some stage it does it becomes that harvest. That's real funny. It's like I can go back in time when I'm here. There's a general outlook. All those tall buildings weren't here because of course the airport was just over there on my left and the aeroplanes used to approach and do a right hand bank and then land on a um, runway which stretched out into, you know, of reclaimed land and it stretched out into the harbour. But now you can barely recognise it. There wouldn't be anything higher than that, uh, that pink building over there back in the, back in the day. That building there, I should think. But everything is very, virtually new. Of course, when the height restrictions were taken away, it's all skyrocketed. I mean, I wouldn't want to be living in that block of flats in a typhoon, would you? Oh, no. Made a bit of space for basketball and football. Yeah, they've done a good job. They've done a good job. Of course, the uh, old airport now um, is where the new stadium has been built. And I think uh, they're staging a concert with a Coldplay in a, a few weeks, I think. And then next March, I, the, the Rugby Sevens will be there. So this area is going to be very busy. So, Hong Kong. Yeah, good place to live. Low tax, business opportunity. I mean, I'd rather be hot than cold. Um, where I live on, I've got the best of all worlds in uh, where I live on the island. So I've got all my mountain biking, running, trail running, paragliding, motorbiking, swimming, canoeing, all the outdoor stuff, beaches. Um, so yeah, the lifestyle is great. Crime, yeah. We were the best, Asia's finest. Police, British law, things work. So this was my first ever police station, Kowloon City Police Station. I can see an EU car, EU K West car, which is the unit I was also in, parked up there, probably having some uh, night char, or maybe a nick someone. Huh. I don't think I'd been here years and look it's got a China flag and the new Hong Kong flag I say new 26 years and it used to be of course the Union flag flying there and uh, the Hong Kong flag which is uh, it's a beautiful flag actually the old Hong Kong one Kowloon Kowloon City Police Station and I never ah. That was my first job. The report room looks very funky nowadays. When I got posted, left the police training school, I ended up there in the uh, front office as the duty officer and inspector post. Absolutely boring as hell. As soon as I could, I escaped. I just wandered around and I explored everywhere. I used to walk a lot. I didn't really want to go to Kowloon City, but um, that's where I ended up. But then I, I then got the posting I wanted at Jigsaw Joy, which is a much more exciting station to be. Right in the heart of it all. But, um, I'm pleased I had a spell at Kowloon City. It's an interesting, interesting posting. Here's my bike. I'm so happy it has new tyres. And I think while I'm here, I'll change the oil. I'll bring it in. Is it okay?
school kids. Hong Kong market. Is there anything I need from the market? I'm desperately thirsty. So I'll get something to drink. Oh, you can feel the uh, aircon. It is it's hot again. It's thundery. You know that thundery feel. But I just looked in that shop and had a beer. And the beer is what I am going to have shortly. Well, that is like, that's going to be like Charlie. Charlie's going to be like that cat. You can tell that's a cat that lives in a market because he's so fat. Look at him. <laughs> That is a very nice fish, pomfret. All of them are nice fish. Lovely vegetables. Yao mo dou miao. Dou miao. Dou miao. No, bo yao, bo yao say sa man. Yi sa man. Dou miao. This is one of the loveliest vegetables. I'm being bombarded. As soon as they know I can say a few things in Cantonese, and I get, I get in a panic because I can't remember. I have to translate through Mandarin back to English. Right, it's pretty hell it's loud. It's a bombardment of all your senses at Hong Kong market. Smell, sights, noise, feel, people will actually grab you. In the old days, I wouldn't make any plans for Christmas. I'll tell you something, if the Buddhists are right, you don't want to come back as seafood, as a fish in China, do you? Right, this should be interesting. Sorry,